Hello, everybody. Welcome to the PWL prediction show for NXT TakeOver. Stand and deliver. As always, it's your two-man power trip, baby. It's Ryan Alvarez and your host, Matt. Hey, you know, this would just be uh, – that's what the prediction show should be called from now on. Two-man, two-man power, power trip. trip. Yeah. I like it. I like yeah. it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, it might upset some people, but we're here to stand and deliver. All right. That was good. That was good. Got him. <laughs> um, and uh, speaking of standing and delivering, man, if if this card does what I think it should do, this might be one of the best cards we see all week. Yeah, it has a lot of potential, um, a lot of um, a lot of high stakes matches, and if they book it correctly you're spot on. It could be the best show of the weekend. Um, if they slip back into that main roster-esque booking, um, at, you know, and just kind of muddying what they already have, then it could be a long night. It could be a long two nights. I agree. I agree. It could be disastrous. But I think there's a lot of upside. Um, and like you already said, we have two nights of action starting uh, tomorrow on Wednesday. Man, mm. this week just creeps up on you fully. And uh, also, then heading into Thursday, we're going to have some dual screen action, I think, going on tomorrow and Thursday with AEW yeah. and Impact on Thursday as well. So, a lot of fun. A lot of good, lot of good wrestling. And, of course, all of it is on the same nights. This is aging me horribly. Oh, dude. <laughs> I used to be young, and now I have back pains and knee problems. I mean, I just put out five Alvarez versus Melters today. so All fantastic. So I highly recommend you guys, once you're done with this one, go check those out. Those are pretty great. I'm a, I'm a big fan. Uh, God, what was the one I was, I was just watching? I think Redragon versus Young Bucks? Oh, yeah. That's – um. That's a really fun match. Um, obviously, former two-time NXT Women's Champion Shayna Baszler um, was with, was with uh, Reed Dragon at that point. So um, crazy, crazy how to think how far we have come. Yeah, since twenty fifteen. Wild. Yeah, yeah. But speaking of Reed Dragon, I guess we'll have to get to some of them later. We're gonna go ahead and start with night one. I'm just gonna try and read up the card here, as it says. So, first matchup, we have Pete Dunn versus Kushida. Mm. Uh, this this could be the match of the night if I didn't think the winner was so predictable. I think this has to be a Pete Dunn victory. I agree because I don't – it's it's tough for me to predict anything else because, you know, they haven't booked Kushida strongly. And when they do, it was when he was feuding with Johnny Gargano. And then, you know, shenanigans. Johnny Gargano is still NXT North American champion. So, um, I don't really know where this puts Kushida. I don't know where it puts Pete Dunne. Um, I feel like this is a match they added. And they were like, well... These 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 two can put on a great match. Let let's just do this, you know. And I truly, honestly, don't know what the next step for either person is. Either way, mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, is Pete Dunne gonna go back to NXT UK? Is he gonna turn face and face Walter again? You know, Kushida you know, hasn't won a high-profile match yet. I hate you. Is it you're right. <laughs> you're right. You're right, but I hate you. <laughs> whoever, whoever loses this match will go on to face someone who we'll talk about further down the card here. This is, Unless, of this course, is, you guys become a tag team. They beat the is, crap out of each other to yeah. earn each other's respect. Oh my god. This is this is the loser leaves the uh you know the uh you know mid card. Loser leaves the mid card match. Feet done versus go up Kushida. or go down. That's that's the concern. 
Exactly. Uh, all right. Up next, we have Walter defending the UK Championship versus Tommaso Ciampa. And I, I have to be very blunt with this one. I feel like this is the most predictable match of the night for one very simple reason. Mm-hmm. Walter is defending the belt on Thursday in UK and something that's already taped. So I have to pick Walter here. Yeah. Um, I think that Rampage Brown wins that match um, against, against Walter. Um, it seems like we're building to an, you know, in, Imperium being in the States full time. Um, whether that's a good decision or not, I guess only time will tell. Um, but I hope Walter caves Chompa's chest in. Um, you know, and it's and it's not that Tommaso Ciampa hasn't done his part in NXT. It is solely for the fact I don't want to see any more of him. I mean, and that's really bad to say considering, you know, the feuds that he's had and the major title runs that he's had. I think, you know, there is an influx of talent right now. Um, you know, a young, young talent. We'll get to a couple of those bits here as we get through night one and night two. But, you know, we 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 went on for about a half hour um, a couple of Mondays ago about the largest, you know, uh, you know, performance center signing class. There's yeah. a lot of young talent, and you know, Tommaso Ciampa can deliver, but he has a lot of neck injuries and he has a lot of other other health issues that tie into everything. And you know, maybe you know, maybe it's time to either you know jump to the main roster and job. I mean, that's. You know, or you know, be a be a producer at NXT. I think, I think now is a good time for maybe maybe Walter to do some serious damage. Maybe maybe get him on the shelf for a couple months. Um, that would I think be the best bet for him. And, and honestly, as much as this is probably piss a lot of people off, man, a little bit of DIY would be nice for this tag team scene right now. Yeah, it would be great, even with. You know the way. Um, I don't think they're really getting to shine much as a tag team, honestly, because of all of the Gargano storylines. To be honest with you, and even so, we've seen the Austin Theory tag team song and dance already on Raw. You know, we yeah. don't want to see uh, tag team heel Austin Theory. He needs to be a face. He needs to do what he does he needs to be american will osprey yeah he needs um yeah he needs to be american will osprey just all uh, i mean he can't oz cut any women because you know wwe in 2021 i mean i think orton rko'd alexa bliss recently yeah i don't know if that's any different because she's a demon but that's getting way off topic here let's go to our next match you're not wrong though we got a six-man gauntlet eliminator match. Uh, mm. We'll get an NXT North American title match uh, on Thursday. We got Leon Ruff versus Isaiah Swerve Scott versus Bronson Reed versus Cameron Grimes versus Dexter Loomis versus L.A. Knight. And we know L.A. Knight comes out last. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. <laughs> but, man, you ready for, I think, the – Swerve of all swerves. Oh no! Bronson Reed bum, wins this bum, match. Bum. Oh. Ooh. Okay. So all right. I think uh, Leon Ruff is gonna get one more pin over Swerve. Swerve will beat the hell out of him. Uh, we'll get Cameron Grimes with a quick pin. Dexter Loomis will come out after. Or actually, no, it'll be Bronson Reed who will then uh, pick up the pieces on Cameron Grimes. Dexter Loomis will get screwed by the way. And then Bronson Reed overcomes the odds to beat L.A. Knight since he's coming out last. They don't typically have the person who comes out last win the actual match, so I don't oh, think yeah. I don't think L.A. Knight's doing it. But I do um, think this could be a good way to a we're gonna take the belt off of Johnny Gargano, 
There's your spoiler for night two. Uh, and we're also going to put LA Knight immediately into a North American title feud with Bronson Reed. Yeah, I don't know. And see, I have a couple faults with that. Um, honestly, my pick originally was going to be Dexter Loomis. Storyline yeah, tells you. Yeah, storyline will tell you that he's going to win. He's going to take the belt off of Gargano. Um, here's my other thing. I know that it's a gauntlet match. Do you want Bronson Reed picking up yet another pinfall victory over LA Knight? Does it have to be pinfall? I mean, I don't really... S- <sighs> so here's, here's my thing. Um, this is going to be Cameron Grimes. And that's the swerve. And that's going out on a super limb. Um, is he going to pay someone to eat the pin? Um, I don't think so. Oh, I think boo. that... Hold on. I think that it is going to exactly what you said. It's going to be the way of going to screw Loomis. Um, Bronson Reed is going to screw LA Knight and Leon Ruff's going to screw Scott. And who's laying back flat in the middle of the ring, passed out, taking everyone's finisher and it's Cameron Grimes. And call and call it crazy, but he's he's one of the best things going for NXT right now. Overall, um, but conventional wisdom would say De- uh, uh, Dexter Loomis. But I do like your Bronson Reed theory. I think he's well overdue. We've said that multiple times on the PWO WrestleCast, which you can catch live Mondays and Thursdays at eight PM Eastern Standard Time on Facebook Live. Good plug there. I like it. Um, yeah, I just I feel like Dexter Loomis is almost too obvious. Like, there's got to be some way we're gonna try and screw out of this, you know? Yeah, I I agree. If they stick to main roster booking, I think they will give it to Loomis. Um, but I think anybody, I think at this point, you look at who's all involved in this match. Anybody but Leon Ruff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, triple threat tag team match for the vacant NXT tag team titles. This is MSK versus Grizzled Young Vets versus Legato Del Fantasma. How and hard a choice was this for you? This was very hard, actually. In fact, I'm still mm-hmm. uh, not sure if I'm going to stick with who I think I'm going to stick with here. Um, Because... There's just a part of me that goes like MSK was going to win the belts anyway. You know? No. Um, there's just that part of me that thinks that. Um, but uh, why don't we further legitimize something and then we can set up for a great tag team match down the road here. Uh, uh, maybe this is me just being more hopeful than anything. Legato del Fantasma mm-hmm. wins the tag titles. I think that I think that most people have that as the least likely answer. Uh, looking at the teams in here, mm-hmm. but I think I think we get a real cool little visual on night two of everyone in uh, LDF holding the gold. Maybe standing on ladders. All right. On top of it, you know, we, we have a lot of, you know, I, I feel like we're going we're gonna to get a lot of face wins here throughout the night. Well, throughout the week. Yeah. So we got to kind of, I think, even it out. You know? Yeah, I am still very on the fence about this but i love your theory so i'm gonna go with it yeah Um, you know what i think that um i think that santos escobar spoiler for tomorrow night um will tell them to stay in the back 
Um, there's a point towards the end of the match where he's getting ready to lose. They come out, push the ladder over. They're all three in an epic ladder shot. And just, now I know that you personally would rather have it have him higher on the card. Um, which there is no reason, you know, why he can't be like, well, this title is below me, you know, give it up. There's no reason we can't do that. I'm gonna need you to stop talking and wait a little bit. Mm. Um, <laughs> You're giving away um, something I haven't talked to anyone about yet. <laughs> oh my gosh, well, I'm pretty good at that. Um, but no, I think um, I think this will continue the storyline that the grizzled young vets can't get the job done in a big spot. Um, you know, and MSK totally ready. Obviously, um, if they pull the trigger on them, I won't be upset. Um, but either way, yeah, I think we, anyone anyone who wins this match is great. Um, I I think these are probably your top three tag teams right now in NXT. Okay, I'm gonna need you to re- correct that statement. The only three tag teams. In that- no, I'm kidding. Uh, Imperium's um, there. I really like Imperium, no, but they just haven't been booked well. Ex- exactly, yeah. And you know, that's the problem. And see, oh, and Breezango. <laughs> yeah. But back to your point um, about about you know the whole Austin theory in the way. Um, getting the North American championship off of uh, off of Johnny Gargano gives us another tag team. And we are back to booking the tag division strong in NXT. I would almost be too concerned that we have too many heel tag teams for it, but I'm with it. I I agree wholeheartedly on all of these things. Mm. All right, let's keep moving up the card because it's now main event time for night one. It's Io Shirai versus Raquel Gonzalez for the NXT. Pass. Pass thrive. Women's championship. Pastor Ryan. Raquel Gonzalez. Guys, it is freaking time. Okay. Io Shirai has had many, many challengers over her tremendous title reign. And the and the only one that constantly and continues to get one over on her is one Raquel Gonzalez. Um is, is she still a little green? Yes. Um, which, you know, depending on how they feel about her, they might reserve um, the next title reign to maybe Frankie. And I, <sighs> uh, for those who don't know, um, Frankie is Ty Valkyrie's new persona in NXT. Um, you may have seen shots of a little dog running around the, uh, you know, CWC. That would be Frankie's dog. Um, but all that aside, um, they 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 book her very very strongly. And there's only one other place to go other than the main roster, and that's to the moon. I like it, but I'm afraid I've got some bad news. Oh, no. Why? I'm tired of Io Shirai. Oh, you don't need to worry about that because she's still going to move up to the main roster. Oh, are they? they, You're saying they're going to give her the Oscar? Yeah. Oh, God. Um, Yeah, I, I don't know, man. Something about something about last Wednesday kind of put it in my head like this is going to be it she's going to beat Raquel and they're going to say there's no one left you know Mm -hmm. so she'll she will hand the uh, NXT women's title over to go face Asuka as a spoiler for your Wrestlemania uh, (laughs) predictions because you know what I think is coming up we just signed so many women Mm -hmm. 
to the NXT roster. I think we're going to have a May Young Classic who we're also going to give the title to. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. Something something is telling me Io Shirai is going to get the Oscar treatment. She's, just, she's been booked so dominant. Mm-hmm. Um, it's almost it's almost not real to think of her losing. I, I mean, Raquel Gonzalez made the most sense storyline wise, but just lately, I feel I, I don't know. I don't know if it's the people who Raquel has been in the ring with or what, but I feel like she's almost lost a step. You know? Yeah. It, it, to me, it goes like she's she's unmotivated because she was told she wasn't winning it from you. Maybe that's me reading way too into it. Um, but speaking of also, Poppy just put out on Twitter today, like, Triple H, you want me to come sing at TakeOver? If we also give EO a special entrance as well? I, I don't know, man. I... I I I still think that she gets the pin. I really do. There there is a ton of female talent that we have now in NXT. Um, I I I do think that's a great idea though, using the May Young Classic as a vessel uh, to crown a number one contender. Um, Maybe have in the past, with, but yeah. Um, also, we should be getting Tegan Knox back soon. Um, Has it been nine months already? I want to say it's close. It doesn't have to be obvious immediately, but I mean, there's when you're ready, there, there's your next. You know? I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> I, I was, I, I love Tegan. I love Tegan Knox. I, just, I worry because she's had two major injuries now. Mm -hmm. Every time there's been a slight push. So I just, I don't know. I don't know. I I just, I don't, I don't know if I'm convinced he is losing. Uh, And they haven't pulled the Oscar treatment out since Oscar. Um, Well, they've only done it twice. So I'm about to say they've done it for Oscar and KO. No, he did. Yeah, Paige. As far as the women go, they've done it. For, I don't know if they've done it for. Uh, I don't think so. A, ge- a gentleman yet, um, but just to put it into a little bit of perspective, um, so we had Paige's title reign that was three hundred and eight days. Um, Oscar was like five hundred something. Yeah, Oscar was. Um, so days recognized it says five twenty two, but it was five ten. Um, you know, the only woman to hold it longer and still be on the NXT roster, Shayna Baszler. Yeah, Shayna. She had a 132-day reign. Um, her and Kyrie Sane played ping pong, and then she held it for 416 days. Yeah. Um, so I was only had it since June. Yeah. So I know they treat these a little bit more delicately because there's only been a total of 12 title reigns in in total Whoa. um yeah since 2013 so you had Paige who vacated you had charlotte's first reign and you had sasha bailey oscar vacated then you had ember moon baszler's first reign kairi saying yep Razor's second reign, Rhea, you had Rhea Ripley, Charlotte's Charlotte. second reign, and now you're at Io Shirai. So, I mean, if you think about it, they put a lot of effort into kind of keeping the prestige. I guess you could say, and that's something that I that I take a lot of. That is, that is something I hold very high because I am definitely one of those people like. You got to defend your title every thirty days, or you might as well just lose it. And yeah, both that's just me. Yeah, and just going through that list, you've had twelve title reigns in eight years. Like, 
Like, that, like that's crazy to think about. Um, but even if Raquel Gonzalez carries it to SummerSlam, I mean, you're only looking at May, June, July, August. You're looking at four months, uh, 120 plus days. Um, yeah, but I don't I mean, think Raquel's going anywhere. I think she's going to be in NXT for a little bit longer. Oh, and and back to my Tegan Knox theory. Even if you want to throw her into the loop, cause some chaos, throw Dakota Kai in there. They could they they could Shawn Michaels and 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 Diesel this really all the way to Survivor Series if they really wanted to give it a good six month build. You know, and yeah, all of these possibilities are on the table. I would love to see Raquel Gonzalez win because she's been booked very well. Um, but I but I see what you're saying though. Um, yeah, you know, I there's, feel there's like there's just been something missing over the past couple of times we've seen her, and now and that was after um, the Dusty Road Women's Tag Team Classic, which you know I'm a huge fan of. Um. But it, I, I don't know. I, I, I love Io Shirai. I really do. But you know how she's, or I'm sorry, the matches and who she's defending her title against. It there's not much build to it. Well, you know, that's and, because I don't think there's and been. I, well. Tony Storm and Ember Moon have been back for months, and then they're like just thrown into a match essentially. Now there was a small build, but what I'm saying is like they haven't given Marquee anything. Matchup. Yeah, they they haven't given us that or really any reason um, to believe that anybody's taking the title off of EO. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, there's, there's. I just, I'm not sold. I'm not sold. Uh, it, it just screams to me like this. This seems very similar. You know. Is it because of the reason I think it is? Because we're bringing in another. Because they're both Asian. Was the well, no, no, that that wasn't okay. Okay. no, <laughs> you're close, but no, no, I, I think they're bringing in another Joshi wrestler. <laughs> so I don't think Io Shirai is going to stick around for a title rematch. Um, and I just, I, a, I don't see her losing twice in that angle. And I just, I, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know. I feel like they have put so much on Io Shirai. Mm-hmm. Similar to how they did Asuka. Like, they, they really have touted that Io Shirai can have a great match with anybody. And, and for the most yeah. part, that really has been true. I mean, Io Shirai has had fantastic matches this entire time. Um, albeit, maybe not necessarily the ones I care the most about on the card uh, due to lack of build or not necessarily the the opponents living up to, to Io Shirai's status. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know. Like, like, it feels very similar to when they put the division on Oscar's shoulders. They've done that for EO. Yeah. And, and the other thing to consider now that we're kind of talking this out a little bit, EO's been champion since June. That's essentially, you know, still the height of the pandemic. Yeah. You know, so to constantly keep putting her in these spots, um, like you said, they have a tremendous amount of trust in 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 her work in her work ethic. Um, that now that we're talking about, they could do that. Um, uh, I don't know. There's a lot of variables I think that play into this. Yeah. Um, I I e the biggest one for me being what are the what what's the women's division plan. Post mania um, on NXT you know, it, across the board, May Young Classic, because, 
Io Shirai to Raw to face Asuka. Um, and maybe even Rhea Ripley. I mean, really, she has a reasonable challenge against either of them. Yeah. I would just True. prefer the Asuka match because it's not one we've seen recently. Maybe ever. I'm not sure if I, if Kana Asuka ever faced Io Shirai. Well, I'll say we haven't seen it in NXT, so um, nothing like two Asian women shouting at each other in real life. Yeah. I, just, I don't know, man. Both of them. Both of them, I think, are widely regarded in, in the top ten of women's wrestlers today. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I think there's Sorry. no reason they couldn't have a good match unless they were limited to something a little gimmicky. But I don't even want to put that out into the universe, even though I just did. Well, Shayna Baszler, her last, like, 10 to 12 matches or something, I saw this on Twitter, have been, like, an average of, like, two minutes. Yeah, the women's division have not had a good representation last little bit out here. But we've yeah. gone way, way down this this Yoshirai <sighs> rabbit hole. Awesome. Um, get get it? Well, I guess I guess she was a lizard person yeah. in Lucha Underground, and they killed the rabbits. Um, there you go. Yeah, full circle. Night <laughs> two. This will be on <laughs> the peacock. Let me see your peacock, cock, cock. I think that's either Kesha or Katy Perry. Either I think we're getting. I'm surprised kids. more people haven't sung this. Yeah, I think we're getting kicked off of YouTube. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> we got to get caught first. That's true. We got the women's tag team titles, Ember Moon and Shotzi Blackheart, defending against The Way. And let me tell you, this is The Way you send Ember Moon and Shotzi Blackheart to SmackDown. Yes, we are going to continue to hot shot these tag titles. Yeah, I would rather these not exist. Um, obviously, because I because I love the idea of us having NXT Women's Tag Team Championships, where they can be evenly spread amongst the community. Um, but no, you're absolutely correct. Um, you know, Ember Moon, Shotzi Blackheart are going to the main roster. Don't care where they go. They're going to be in six and eight women's tag team matches for the next two to three years. God, I hope hope you're wrong in that. I I could see them sticking around for a little bit longer in NXT, but at the same time, it just feels like we need to restock the shelf. Mm -hmm. No, I I agree. It's, It's we've done enough of 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 Shotzi Blackheart riding out in her tank and shooting the same two foes with her nerf gun foam dart thing so let's move on football I think is it I don't know (laughs) we got Jordan Devlin versus Santos Escobar in a ladder match to determine who is the undisputed NXT Cruiserweight Champion. I think we already, you guys already know which way I think both of us are going. Uh, we're yeah. giving it to the man who's been champion since May of 2020, Santos Escobar. Um, this this could be um, this could be match of the two nights, which would probably make it match of the week. Um, yeah, both guys can effing go. Um, I really enjoyed that they were giving Santos Escobar some, you know, main event love for a couple weeks. Um, I think Don't worry, he'll star. be back. Yeah, I think he's a star. Um, I, I just this screams him just winning. That leaves Jordan Devlin to go back to UK, do what he's going to do. Challenge Walter. Uh, You're yeah. right, Challenge Walter. Yeah. Um, and lose to Walter. Uh, well, yeah. Walter doesn't lose. Um, except I think he's losing to Rampage Brown. But anyway. Um, Repeat that thing that you just said about Walter not losing. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, Walter's not losing I got, I got um, a long shot idea on that one too, but uh-uh. crazy. <laughs> yeah, but 
you know, I think it's exactly what I said for night one. Um, Mendoza and Wild um, will be told to stay in the back. Jordan Devil will be very close to winning the title. They'll come out, help out, push the ladder over, and they will. Um, can't remember which ladder match it was, but they're going to put um, Santos Escobar on their shoulders and walk up the ladder with them. And that is how he is going to be the new undisputed NXT Cruiserweight champion. Um, I think this makes the most sense. Now, yeah. now I I also don't think Santos Escobar is long for the cruiserweight division. Maybe we see a little bit of an option cruiserweight, option C. He's going to turn in that cruiserweight title to challenge for a world heavyweight title. I don't know if anyone's ever come up with a concept like that. You've been champion for so long and you've ran rough shot over your division that turn in your belt, get a shot at the world title. But I like it. We might call it the option C for cruiserweight. Yeah. Um, you, like you, that? Know, you like that blatant ripoff? Keith Lee did this when he had both titles. He wants to give a greater opportunity um, you know, to the rest of the deserving uh, guys on the roster. However, <clears throat> Santos Escobar believes that the Cruiserweight Champion, sent, uh, the Cruiserweight Championship, since it's been around the waist of Jordan Devlin, that it is below him. Uh, he doesn't hold peasant gold. He only wants one piece of gold. Yep. Love it. Love it. Johnny Gargano versus Gauntlet winner. You guys already know my thoughts. Bronson Reed, baby. Really, I think um, uh, I think unless it is Leon Ruff or Cameron Grimes, Johnny Gargano loses. If it's Leon Ruff or Cameron Grimes, all right, Gargano retain. But I don't I don't know if he beats LA Knight. I don't know if he beats uh, Bronson Reed. I don't know if he beats Dexter Loomis. Uh, I definitely doesn't beat Dexter Loomis. Yeah. Um, he some shenanigans. Loomis. Yeah. He doesn't beat Loomis. Um I think I think Loomis is the only one that he loses to. Um Ooh. hold on. Bless you. Um thank you. Um you know there but he's the only so let me just rephrase. He's the only one one hundred percent that if he wins the gauntlet match, he's going to be the North American championship. Um, he, uh, you could say, you know, Leon, Leon Ruff is 0%. Well, I'll say 1% because I already did it one fucking time. Um, I would say Cameron Grimes is about a 10%. Um, Swerve's about 25. Um, LA Knight's about... 40 to 50 percent and Bronson Reeds is, is about 70 to 75 percent as far as if they win that is what their odds are to defeat Johnny Gar Gargano obviously Dax or Loomis is 100 percent they've been running this storyline for a while now um and this is a way to move on from you, uh, sorry I'm interrupting I don't know if you've kept up with us on Twitter but Indy Hartwell is hinting that maybe she's got some some feelings for Dexter Loomis. She's been showing it out on on NXT, but she's been putting out more of it on uh, on Twitter. Someone brought up, uh, and they have a gif of when they talk about how Dexter Loomis chokes people. She was like, "I mean, she's into it, I guess." I mean, whatever um, works, but but yeah. I almost wonder if maybe that plays into it. <sighs> Why? Because Dexter Loomis, ultimate bad guy. Um, Gaslighting people. I'm really waiting for Indy Hartwell to say, paint paint me like one of your chloroformed girls. What did you get plainly ignore the fact that he has like kidnapped like four people? How is he a baby face? Because he has the Stranger Things theme as his entrance music. That's good. That's good. All right. Adam Cole, Kylo Riley. 
unsanctioned match. Do we just want to go on three here? No. Don't do that. Don't we give can, me hope. We can, we can try. One, two, three. Kyle O'Reilly. Adam Cole. God, I want you to be right, but. Listen, listen. He's going to get help from Pat McAfee. He is going to be the mouthpiece that that stable needs. Um, it doesn't have to be a long term, um, but I think that um, Pat McAfee has made Adam Cole realize, you know, that you know the uh, that 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 the undisputed era, you know, he didn't need them; they needed him. Pat McAfee comes out, gives the assist, the dis- the the distraction, and How long once is the match is fish out for. Um, God, some people say he quietly retired. I'm not gonna lie to you. I read that on I read that on PW Insider. Um, I want to say a couple of days ago, um, but the only reason I haven't brought it up is because it's hearsay at this point. Um, there are people not higher up within the company um, that are wondering whether he has quietly retired um, due to all of his injuries. Um, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, yeah. Um, I hope they would give some kind of like storyline thing. Maybe Roddy. I don't know. Maybe one of them. Well, Roddy's not on the card either, either night. Yeah. Um, it almost Room makes for some shenanigans. <sighs> yeah. It is unsanctioned as well. Yeah. And I, and I was thinking, what would be the ultimate heel thing here for Adam Cole to do to win? And that was the, the thing that <laughs> I think would, would instantly make him a bigger heel <laughs> is to pair with Pat McAfee. Uh, I want you to be wrong so badly. <laughs> I can't emphasize how badly I want you to be wrong. I don't know if you are. I This to me just screams Kyle O'Reilly, big baby twin. God, his character. Okay. I, I don't hate the no. character. I just don't think he can deliver the promos to do it. Yeah, that promo made him look like a real vagina. See, I, I thought the promo itself wasn't bad like the words yeah once again just the delivery like like if you're really talking about like you know look we were bad people we did bad things and you know i don't want to live like that anymore i can i can get like i can get on board with that you know it's the redemption arc you know Mm -hmm. but you gotta have a bit more of a fall from grace in my opinion but I also think I don't I don't know where either of these guys go from here. Exactly. I mean <sighs> and the fact that this is straight to an unsanctioned match makes me kind of go like we'll do this and maybe one more match, but that's about it. And maybe the last man standing you, match. I think Kyle O'Reilly wins both of them. I I don't even know, honestly. It's it's the fact that Adam Cole has been with NXT now for a while, and you know we had we we've had these kind of start and stop moments with him, where hey we'll put you in the we'll put you in the Rumble, or you know hey we'll put you you know on you know, on the, on the Survivor Series card. I, I hate you. There are so many things I hate. It's Vince's world, and we just live in it, unfortunately. Listen, that's why he's over 205 pounds. Is he? <laughs> I think so. Um, I want to I wanna say he's like, maybe 200 pounds. Uh, he's built as six foot, 210 pounds. 
I don't believe you. <laughs> like you made me build that. But, no, I. Agree. But he's not two ten. I agree, and obviously I pulled that off. I love Adam media. Cole. He is not two ten. He hasn't been two ten since fucking Ring of Honor. Like, I, mean, I don't even yeah. know if he was two ten in Ring of Honor. Oh, he was he was a little pudgy at one point. Yeah, he but started still. to slim down. Yeah, um, I think you. There was a point in time during that Survivor Series run when you prominently featured NXT on SmackDown and he was winning Daniel matches. Bryan. Yeah. In the yeah. main event of SmackDown. Yeah, so I don't understand how you could take a guy like that and not put him on the main roster or not have him, you know, in some major feud. If you're Adam Cole, do you even want to go to the main roster? I, I hate to be that guy, but look at the last run of NXT champions on the main roster. Andrade, gone. Alistair yeah. Black, sitting on the sidelines. About Drew McIntyre, all right, you're doing something with Drew. Johnny Gargano, still in NXT. Finn Balor, back to NXT. Samoa Joe at the commentary <laughs> table. Kevin Owens is going to face Sami Zayn for the thousandth time at WrestleMania. With Logan Paul in this corner. Don't. Don't don't do this anymore to Kevin Owens. He doesn't deserve it. He doesn't deserve this punishment. Shinsuke Nakamura, not even on Mania. Bobby Roode, not even on Mania and in a tag team. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, if I'm an NXT champion, I don't know if I want to leave NXT. But speaking of NXT champions. There you go. Finn Balor defends against Carrying Cross. One, two, three, carrying cross. Finn Balor. Dude. Now the Balor gives him his first loss in NXT. Um, and his only loss in NXT. <sighs> They're gonna EC3 him to the main roster. Except he actually won a title in this one. He did it was a bad, it was a it was a below par match, but yeah, you're right. Um, I I just think Carrying Cross does something. I I don't think he has any moment at Mania, but I definitely think Raw after. Maybe he comes out and puts down Randy Orton since they've been hinting at a match for months now on on social True. media. I also don't think you're gonna move Finn Balor back to the main roster. I think we'll revisit Adam Cole versus Finn Balor should Adam Cole win his match, which hopefully he does. And maybe then we'll get Adam Cole versus Kyle O'Reilly for the title. Or Kyle O'Reilly finally wins it. I'd be fine with that. Um, my, my big thing here is, you know, and we've seen it with EC3. He only had one match. And my problem now is, has Karrion Cross had enough NXT exposure to be warranted a main event run? Now, us here at PWO... We're big fans. ...understand, and we're huge fans. And we know what Killer Cross is more than capable of. But does Vince know who Killer Cross is? No, he knows who Karrion Cross is. I'll say this: I think he's gonna look at him and salivate. Yeah, I don't know if he can salivate with you know bringing dentures as well. Maybe, but... but he'll also see Scarlet with him, and I think the combination of the two: a, he's gonna start thinking, how can we get these guys against the Fiend and Alexa Bliss? A and B, the, the dude looks like a main, a main event player. Maybe even someone to challenge Drew McIntyre once he's champion again. A lot of spoilers, not, future predictions here. Yeah, we're going to differ a lot. Um, 
Remember, right. it's not what we want to happen. It's what will happen. Well, I just don't want Karen Cross to be rushed to the main roster, have a feud or two, and then just be subdued to the mid card. You know, and I I agree with you. Is that about Damian that, Priest? Yeah, exactly. Oh, you know, I'll say this: he has he has a match at WrestleMania, so he does. You're right. He's he's doing better than half of your former NXT champions. (sighs) I'm not pushing this at all. Yeah, my and that's my only concern is we're going to push him too fast to the main roster. Um, you know, and we're going to have his thing with Randy Orton and or his thing with The Fiend and then what? Maybe he's he'll bury Miz super, and Morrison. I can see them giving him a bunch guy. of a bunch of uh, like squash feuds to SummerSlam. And then what? Maybe maybe an icy run. Or maybe that's where he beats Randy Orton and then makes it clear that he's got challenged for the, the championship. I don't think he goes to SmackDown because I think no matter what, by SummerSlam this year, Roman Reigns is going to be champion, and I don't think you're going to do Cross versus Reigns. Oh, no. At, this not, point. at least not yet. Yeah. Um, maybe that is a Survivor Series matchup, but I'm not sure if I buy that. Um. But I think, you know, we, there's a lot of great matchups. You can have AJ versus Cross. You know, we can have Matt Riddle versus Cross. I know not, I'm not a fan of Matt Riddle's in-ring work, but I think he can have a good match. I think Cross can bring anyone to at least a decent match. Yeah, Matt Riddle can't even remember his lines. Well, because okay. he's yeah. high all the time. Yeah. I wish he was off my TV all the time. But – in. In a way, you're right. You know, if booked correctly, Killer Cross could be great on the main roster. Um, at the very minimum, he should be good on the main roster. However, the track record is just not great. Agreed. And even if and even if he loses, he is still technically a former NXT champion. So, <laughs> well, um, and that's my thing, Adam Cole. You said six foot. 210. Short, yeah. Cross is 6'4, 265. I mean, that is the body uh, type of the main roster. The preferred body type of the main roster. Yeah. And now, now maybe he maybe he is an axe or, or a saw that goes right through the new day in a handicap match. Yeah, and then you know, all, all this talk about moving up to the main roster. And we circle back to a topic we discuss here on the show all the time, oversaturation of the main roster. Well, I think I think spring cleaning will be happening shortly after Mania. So there's got to be a lot. And a think, lot of reshuffling. I think there's going to be, unfortunately. Either that or you're going to see people pushed out of in-ring, uh, active in-ring to coaches, producers, I think I'd be more content with that. Um, I think that guys like Tommaso Ciampa, I think, would would be oh. an outstanding asset. No, nah, I think he'll still be in ring. I'm talking like Drew Gulak. Akira mm. Tozawa will always have a job chasing after yeah. R-Truth. But, like, Bo Dallas is still on roster. I don't think Bo Dallas will still be there. They, they've got nothing for him. Yeah. Um, what are we doing? I ain't saying this. I don't know if Chad Gable or Tucker will still be there. Um, Aren't that, um, uh, that is it, a video for another time to go down. But yeah. I do think Karrion Cross is main roster bound after this takeover. I didn't think he was going to be long for NXT to begin with. And I think this is kind of his last leg. All right. And maybe, maybe we get Demon. Maybe we get Demon Balor for the first time in forever to face Karrion Cross. I hope you're wrong on all counts. (laughs) I hope he has a lengthy NXT championship run. I think, I think, I think, I think it it would be beneficial to him 
because I also think that care that the character of Karrion Cross is better in front of fans. I think that um, you know, and obviously we're probably not going to see it for a while, but um, I I think him staying in NXT, you know is the best spot for him now with his character the whole his whole body of work yes i i agree with you he should be on the main roster but and and this has always been a defense of mine i've used it many a times most recently with bianca belair you need a good strong title run um just for that title experience to to be kind of jettison to the main roster um agree or disagree that's just my 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 thought process on it um and you know what at least i'm consistent we'll give you that well guys that's what we think of nxt stand in the liver once again i do want to reiterate i think this could be a very very good two nights of wrestling um i wish all the good wrestling wasn't on the same nights that's my big thing um so you guys have heard our predictions. If you're on the YouTube or any of our other video watching channels, hey, check us out. There's a lot of fun videos. Subscribe, like, hit that bell. All those wonderful, wonderful things. Go to the commentary section. Tell us where we're wrong. Tell us what uh, you think is going to happen. Let us know. And, uh, Kyle, I gave like half a plug. You want to finish this plug up? Yeah, go watch Alvarez versus Meltzer. Um there's a lot of things that got to today, a lot of things that did not get to, um, such as um, Briscoe's versus the Young Bucks. Well, then, um, I guess the Cod Pilot decided the plug was done. With that, I'll go ahead and close this out here. Uh, guys, Check out the content. It's a lot of really great work, and I know uh, Ryan Alvarez has put in a bunch, a bunch of effort into this. So we will see you uh, in our next video. We'll see you live on Thursday. If you really like what you hear, you can check us out and uh, support us at ko-fi.com slash pwo. One, two, three. It's as easy as one, two, three. And for the small price of a cup of coffee, you can help us put on these incredible shows. With that, guys, I must bid you adieu. Goodbye. Good night. We'll see you again very, very soon. Bang. <laughs>